humans merging with AI, the ability to control the weather, reinstating extinct species. These are just a few of the things that will happen in the next 100 years. Hop in our time machine and get ready for a wild ride as we travel decade by decade, exploring what humanity will look like in terms of technology, space exploration, and more. 2025 to 2035. In just the next 10 years, we're going to see some incredible progress in terms of space travel. SpaceX will be sending humans to the moon. The first step will be an uncrewed demo mission, but soon after that, SpaceX will launch the Artemis mission, allowing humans to set foot on the moon once again. And if you're wondering about getting to Mars, well, that's going to take a little bit longer. Stick around and we'll tell you when. But what else is going to happen to Earth in this time frame? Well, we'll fight a deadly killer, pancreatic cancer, with a new vaccine. It's based in mRNA technology, the same technology we used for the COVID vaccine. The first step to fighting this cancer will be surgery, but the vaccine will help prevent it from coming back. Vaccination will drive the body to produce protective T cells. These will recognize any new cancer cells and wipe them out. Now, while we're saving lives from cancer, humans will still be facing threats from climate change. One casualty of our climate crisis will be Bangkok, a city of 10 million people. Unfortunately, its soft, loamy ground is sinking lower and lower, 10 centimeters a year. The pumping of groundwater is pulling the city down. Now, at the same time, global warming is causing the oceans to rise. This beautiful city will see a terrible and devastating flood within the next decade. In the most extreme scenario, 96% of the city would be below sea level by the year 2030. Maybe a barrier at the mouth of the Chow Freya River would help a little, but flooding can't be held off forever. For cities that don't get flooded with water, well, they'll see a big shift on the roads. Self-driving cars will finally deliver on their promise to dominate in the next decade. Unfortunately, they'll probably be tied to a subscription service, so get ready to pay an extra 10 bucks a month for car flicks. And if you do choose to drive your own car, it'll be kind of like a hobby, like flying a kite or something. Speaking of subscription payments and money, in the next 100 years, it could all be going digital. Yeah, imagine a world where cash is as ancient as the dinosaurs and every transaction is traceable. Uh, we believe this shift will likely push many towards cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. The only problem is Bitcoin mining is notorious for its high energy consumption and environmental impact, which could make our flooded city situation even worse. But luckily for us, one company is already working to solve that problem, Griffin Digital Mining. We believe these guys are like the eco-friendly superheroes of the Bitcoin world. They're a 100% renewable energy powered Bitcoin miner using hydropower to reduce their environmental footprint drastically. Griffin seeks to utilize cutting edge digital mining technology to achieve high efficiency while keeping costs low. They were the first to publish a detailed report on their carbon footprint in the Bitcoin mining industry. And they're one of the inaugural recipients of the Green Proofs for Bitcoin certification. And we believe Griffin proves you can mine Bitcoin sustainably. So as we move into this digital age, Keep an eye on Griffin. They're aiming to make sure our digital currency future is a green one. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. We've got 90 more years to cover. Hop back in the time machine and let's head over to the next decade. 2035 to 2044. Okay, let's check in on how space exploration is progressing. We'll finally get to surf the hydrocarbon seas of Titan, Saturn's largest moon. We'll send a submarine into space, getting it to land on another moon and plunge into the ocean there. By studying Titan, we'll learn new and fascinating things about how life began on Earth. Titan has an internal liquid water ocean, which could contain the building blocks to alien or human life. It also has dunes that are rich in carbon and nitrogen compounds. Who knows what new life forms we might find out there. But that's not all. This is also the decade when we finally have a crew of humans landing on Mars. We'll get a better understanding on how to deal with the many challenges of this mission by around 2040. 
and we'll find solutions for all sorts of things we previously thought weren't doable. Things like how to minimize the effects of radiation during the trip to Mars and how to produce oxygen from the Martian atmosphere. We'll also solve the problem of having fresh food and water on the planet. Not to mention, we'd be building pressurized, radiation-resistant shelters that will allow us to live on the Red Planet. And it's a good thing we'll be further along in our exploration of other worlds, too, because things might be getting a little too hot to handle here on Earth. By 2035, our planet will be one and a half degrees Celsius warmer. Lemurs will be going extinct. And those cute koalas in Australia? Say goodbye to them, too. Extreme heat waves will be common in the U.S. Worse than that, high-intensity hurricane winds are breaking and redefining the hurricane scale. Category 6 hurricanes with sustained winds over 125 kilometers per second may be pretty infrequent today. We've only seen five of these since 2013, but in 20 years, they'll hit the Gulf Coast cities so frequently that people will start emptying out of the coastal cities. Goodbye, Houston, Galveston, Baton Rouge. Now, weather won't be the only thing that's changing. Our demographics will be shifting too. By around 2044, white people will be a minority population in the US. And if your reaction to this is meh, so what? Well, you're in good company. A majority of Americans feel this is neither a good nor a bad thing for society. 2045 to 2054. Climate news will get worse during the 10 years between 2045 and 2055. Temperatures will be two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. That's a lot. This will have important consequences for the trillion odd species on Earth right now. Many will be victims of the sixth extinction event. In this decade, 40 to 50% of our current species could go extinct. Among them are the African forest elephants, Amur leopards, and the Yangtze finless dolphins. Populations of these creatures are already dwindling today. So unless there's a drastic change in our warming climate, poaching, and forest loss, well, animals like these are on their way out. The Dead Sea, a unique natural phenomenon with a salt content 10 times higher than the oceans, is also at risk. Sadly, these salty waters will slowly evaporate due to the immense heat. Currently in the Dead Sea, evaporation is causing water levels to drop an incredible 1.2 meters each year. During this decade, we'll finally kiss it goodbye. Now, with the devastating effects of global warming, there will be more pressure to innovate. We'll see a major new development in energy, one that will crack the code to commercializing fusion power. This is the process that smashes two hydrogen atoms together to form helium and, in the process, release a lot of energy. Today, we don't know how to do this cheaply, but 20 years down the line, we'll figure out how to get the cost down. This will be the beginning of the end of carbon emissions. Something else we emitted into the air decades ago might also finally have an update. In 1999, Ukraine sent a message named Cosmic Call 1 into space. In 2051, this message will reach its destination. Gliese 777, a yellow subgiant star 52 light years away. Maybe we'll get a call back from the aliens on their iPhone 6751. 2055 to 2064. In 2058, the Beatles music catalog will enter the public domain. I'd play some of it for you right now, but we get a copyright strike, but not 50 years from now. Also in this decade, we'll have established a permanent presence on Mars. Probably not the colony of one million people that Elon Musk has projected, but definitely a base camp and the start of a Martian future. Back on Earth, we'll finally have umbrellas that don't get wet in the rain. Not super exciting at first glance, but it means we'll be masters of nanotechnology. We'll be able to incorporate tiny structures into fabrics, which do amazing things. In the umbrellas, we'll use what's called the lotus effect, where the nanoparticles repel water. Nanoparticles in our clothing could dissolve dirt and kill microbes, so we never have to wash our clothing either. I'd be happy if I 
oh, never had to do laundry ever again. But forget about laundry. There's another thing we'll be rid of. By 2060, we'll eliminate coal and oil from our energy system. Solar and wind power will be widely incorporated into society and we'll be making even bigger strides in fusion power. More on that in a minute. 2065 to 2074. Now, if you think nanotech clothing is pretty cool, well, in the next decade, we'll be mastering Pico technology. This is 1,000 times smaller than nanotech. Scientists will be manipulating the energy states within electrons. This will change the structures and properties of individual atoms. From this, new types of matter will emerge. Who knows, maybe we'll be building entirely new kinds of chips or supercomputers using this new technology. Now, if you're watching this and you think you might have a hard time making it to 2065, well, you're in luck. Because by this decade, technology in the medical field will have progressed so far that we'll be able to print new body parts in 3D. Yeah, we'll be rejuvenating ourselves with stem cells and gene editing will be able to cure diseases. Through a combination of these and other methods, the medical field will be helping people live years, maybe decades longer. 2075 to 2084. Okay, by the late 2070s, the transition to clean energy will be complete. Humanity will be carbon neutral across the globe and the last of natural gas power will be phased out. Electric cars will be everywhere. The gas vehicles we ride around in today will be considered vintage toys. And with the advances made in nanotechnology, our solar cells, which convert the sun's energy into electricity, will be super efficient. Now, technology will optimize our human bodies too. Artificial organs, bionic eyes and ears for supervision and hearing, and implants to enhance intelligence. Humans 2.0 will be vastly superior to what we are today. More intelligent by design. This is the decade we'll also find a new way to launch ourselves into space. We'll look back at today and think, gosh, space rockets? That was so 2024. Instead, we'll have a space elevator. This will require a cable that runs from the ground up through the atmosphere all the way to a satellite that orbits in sync with the Earth's rotation. A cable will have to be made of some special material, maybe diamond nano threads. 2085 to 2094. Now, despite our efforts to curb climate change, temperatures will keep rising due to the carbon dioxide that's already been baked into the atmosphere from prior decades. Many parts of the world won't have snow anymore. We might have to say goodbye to the Winter Olympics, skiing and ice hockey. But that might be the least of our worries. With our ice continuing to melt, polar bears could face extinction. Their numbers will have already dropped by 70% between 2000 and 2050. The few remaining bears in the interior Arctic will be struggling to stay alive. But having figured out the de-extinction processes, we'll know how to bring the polar bears back in the future. We've already created embryos of some extinct animals using genome mapping and gene editing. In the next half century, scientists might figure out how to implant these embryos into closely related species, giving us a path out of extinction. For the first time in Earth's history, we may be able to turn back the clock. With global temperatures still rising, by 2090, Western Antarctica will be as warm as today's Alaska or Iceland. If we travel even further ahead in time, the new landscape would be unrecognizable. Many of the largest Antarctic ice sheets will have melted away and human settlements will be on the rise with new towns and urban infrastructure built on the Antarctic soil. 2095 to 2104. The landscape will also be different for the Atlantic Ocean. In the second half of the 21st century, a vast network of wind farms will be springing up in this part of the world. By the end of the century, they'll transform our methods of power generation. But they'll have another interesting capability, allowing us to control and moderate the weather. Even as hurricanes intensify and break all records, 
wind turbines can absorb the energy, reducing hurricanes from a level five to a level one. Some of the Gulf cities that emptied out may start to repopulate. Over 80% of the Amazon rainforest will disappear by the end of the century. Logging, fires, farming, and industry will destroy this valuable resource. As a result, many plant and animal species that lived in these forests will have gone extinct. And indigenous peoples who made their home here may be wiped out. Rapid globalization and interconnectedness will also cause the extinction of our languages. In the late 20th century, there were over 7,000 languages worldwide. But by the time we get to the year 2100, we'll be down to just three languages, English, Mandarin, and Spanish. 2105 to 2115. Okay, if you're able to live until the 2100s, Genetic engineering will be able to transform your body in new and unusual ways. Early in the 22nd century, we might be incorporating a key element of plants into our human cells, giving some of us fantastic new capabilities. Which element? Chloroplasts, where photosynthesis takes place. This would enable us to take in the sun's energy and carbon dioxide to produce our own sugars it'll be a whole new way of feeding ourselves. And humans could also find a way to live forever. The technology to upload our minds, including our complete memories into a computer, will be perfected. The world might divide into those who want to live forever inside a computer and those who don't. 2115 to 2124. By the dawn of the 22nd century, AI will be an integral part of all society. Humans merged with AI will possess vastly superior cognitive capabilities. These human-AI hybrids will combine the emotional intelligence of humans with the intellectual and analytical superpowers of AI. This could create wars between humans who have merged with AI and those who have not will now have permanent settlements on the Moon and Mars. We'll have explored the outer reaches of our solar system, sending missions to the gas giants, the Kuiper Belt, and beyond. We'll be mining asteroids for minerals and metals. Couples getting married will argue about whether the destination wedding will take place on the Moon or on the Red Planet. Well, maybe they'll marry on one and honeymoon on the other. The next 100 years will see terrible lows and amazing highs. With massive climactic shifts, Earth will transform, cities will be underwater, and many species will go extinct. Even as this is happening, humans will merge with AI to become exceptional transhuman beings. We'll conquer space. Eventually, we'll become carbon neutral and then find ways to tame the weather. And in the distant future, we'll apply our intelligence to repopulate the Earth with the species we wiped out. If you're young, buckle up. The next 100 years are going to be a wild and amazing ride. But what about the next billion years? What will they look like? Well, that sounds like a story for another What If.